Kim here with Little Biz Resources, and if you are an Etsy seller, you may have received an email letting you know that third-party tools like Aweber, E-Rank, Everbee, and others are no longer permitted to access emails for your buyers. Now, don't worry if you got this email because this has kind of been the direction that they should have gone a long time ago. In fact, I think I predicted this back in 2018. I said within five years, well, they're a little late on that, but that's not a surprise. And this is in, in suit with the same thing. At, or Amazon did this um, back in late 2017, and they, you know, removed the seller access to the buyer emails and it's because Amazon wants Amazon customers and they want to keep people on the Amazon platform. And of course you can also claim it's to protect the buyers and to an extent it does. And that's what Etsy is claiming that there is confusion. There is confusion. I have plenty of buyers that get very confused when they get an email from me. And so there is confusion and of course it does protect them as a buyer on Etsy. I've had plenty of people put my email on their marketing list without my permission. So there, there are, there are plenty of arguments for doing this and I'm surprised they haven't done it sooner. So it's kind of a good thing, but as a seller, this does make it not as streamlined to collect emails. And so what you see here on the screen is how this currently works. So you have this third party tool and when a buyer buys, the third party tool then sends them, if you're using, like I use Aweber, right? So Aweber will send them an email and it kind of like whatever I, I put in there, I put an introduction and invite them to opt into my list, tell them what the list is about and everything else. If they do nothing, it, if they don't accept it, they don't, they don't, they do nothing. They, nothing happens. They just stay on the list as unsubscribed. If they unsubscribe, they click the unsubscribe button, they get removed from the list. Then if they accept it, then they're on your email list, right? So this is automatically what they call a double opt-in. So they're technically opted in right here when, once they buy. So the, the buyer buys something from you and they get sent an email because they're opted into your list. But the way that Etsy required it, and this is the way it should have been, was that in order for somebody to be on your list, they had to accept the invitation. So now you're like, okay, well, if that can't happen, how do we get people on our list? So the alternate method for this is whatever email marketing tool you're using, Aweber, I use Mailvio. I'm actually used Aweber and then I used a tool to get it out of Aweber into Mailvio. <laughs> so I like Mailvio. It's cheaper for me. And, um, there's another one is Everbee. That's pretty good. So if you're using one of those, then you just build what they call a landing page. Some people call it an opt-in page or a squeeze page. And instead we're going to go like this and we're going to get rid of the third party tool and we're going to send them this. Now this is where it gets a little bit more manual, right? Because we can automate everything with the tool. I anticipate, I think I've heard of a tool that did this and they got in trouble. So I anticipate a tool being created, if not already existing, that allows us as sellers to automatically message the buyer. Now, again, I have heard of a couple of tools that did this. The one that I knew about is no longer, no longer works. So I'm assuming they got shut down. But again, if people are abusing that, that's what happens. So this could turn into something where we have a different tool to use. If not, then this is just going to be a manual process, right? So when you fill your orders, you would then send a message manually to the customer and say, Hey, I fulfilled your order. You can check, you know, if you've put all the information like you should have, you know, just go ahead and, and check the, the records in here. If you have any questions, reach out to me, by the way, if um, you want to stay in touch or you want to, you know, get offers or you have a coupon for the, whatever it is that you have as your offer, you can put that as a little blurb and say, here's the link to sign up, right? And send them to your landing page. And that would be landing page. And then the same thing, you can either have single opt-in or double opt-in. Single opt-in is when you, they sign up here and they're just subscribed if they sign up. Right. And then double opt-in is the same thing Is it's basically instead of an introduction, it's a confirmation. So you would give them the first one that says, Hey, just wanted to confirm that this is your email. You get more people to subscribe with a single opt-in. Right. And so that's, that is a benefit is that if you're sending them this link that you may get more people opting in than you do right now with a third party tool. So that's one thing. Now there are other ways to get emails. You don't have to just get them from buyers. Buyer emails are the best because they have had an interaction with you. And if they like interacting with you, 
they most likely will want to stay in touch, right? I still don't get, I get maybe 30 or 40% of my buyers that will sign up. And so it's, it's a process, right? You're not going to expect everybody to be signed up and to, to join your list anyway, though some sellers acted like that. And that was part of the problem. So again, I do not know, this was something that came up in, in a, um, in a webinar thing I was on earlier and somebody goes, well, we'll just get the emails out of the transaction email that Etsy provides us. I suspect they're going to take that away too. That's exactly what happened on Amazon. They removed third-party access and then they removed emails altogether. Like we had them for like another year maybe. And then, um, in 2017, they completely removed I think it was 2017. They completely removed all the email information. So I think I can get phone number information to the seller fulfilled, but what's the point, right? I mean, if they're buying from Amazon, they don't know who I am. They think they're buying the product from Amazon anyway. Same thing on Etsy. I cannot tell you how many times people contact me and ask me about their order. And I've never had any interaction with them, but because they were on my listing and they thought of it, they clicked and contacted me instead it happens way too often. Like that's a problem. So for customer support, it's, there's a challenge as it is with the customers viewing the products on Etsy as Etsy products and not seller products. Now, not everybody's like that, but I get quite a few that are like that. And it's shocking to me. So again, I, I see where they're going with this. So let's talk about some other ways that you can get emails. So we said you can message them for now. I don't know. There's a fine line in Etsy's terminology between driving them away from Etsy and providing customer service, right? So if you have the list already set up or if you have a landing page and you can put this, by the way, you can put this in your about section there. You have a whole link section. You can put a link to it there. You can put it in um, the top as a note to your, for your entire shop. You can put it in your terms. You can put this information about your, your email list everywhere right? As long as it's an email list and you're not like trying to steal the customers. Oh, Hey, go to my shop here instead. You can actually do that with your links. They just don't want you to do that in email or in the customer messages, right? So they don't want you to message the customer and say, Hey, you can buy this over on my website here. That is avoiding Etsy fees and you can get your shop shut down. So as long as you're keeping the customer information about Etsy. So like, I'm not going to message them and say, Hey, you can buy stuff on here. Might email them later about it. But for now, if the email list is about, you know, the offers on Etsy and everything. And then oh, I might send out an email every now and again saying, Hey, just so you know, the products that I, that don't have any traction on Etsy, I move over to this other site. If you're more comfortable buying on Etsy, let me know. And I can set up a listing. You know, you can, you can do that. You can do whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. Just keep in mind that Etsy has the power to shut your account down. So you want to be respectful of the fact that Etsy's customers are Etsy. If you've read, or if you've seen any of my other stuff, you know, I have problems with that because we pay for the listing and Etsy already drives enough traffic away from our listing. So I do have issues with that. However, this is how you can do that. So we can invite them, of course, as a, um, as their buyers, we can say, Hey, we invite you to join our list. Then we can also have it linked in all over the place. And then we can also do this in our social media too. Right now, one of the big things is, is you have to incentivize them to sign up. So a lot of times it's a discount in e-commerce. It's usually some sort of a discount. So, you know, I like to do, which I have not been very good about, but I like to say, Hey, I'm going to give you guys, um, and they, I do give them a code, which nobody ever uses. I give it to them once and then I never remind them. So I give them a code so they can always get a discount in my shop. So they're VIP members, but nobody ever uses it. So I have a sale almost always running and I don't worry too much about it. But if I see a repeat customer, I will usually go and they, they bought it full price. I'll usually go in and, and honor that anyway. And then say, Hey, by the way, this is the code, but I should be every week emailing them and saying, Hey, here's the code, you know, and highlighting a couple of the products or something featuring something. So there's a whole strategy to it. I was being super lazy and just sent them the first couple emails. And then every now and again, I would send it, but this is going to be more of a, Hey, if you're going to do email marketing, you should probably be doing it right. So one of my goals this year is to, you know, set up a better system for my Etsy email list. And this is 
this is a good time to do that. It's really funny that this came up too, because I was just thinking, you know what, I need to go in and I need to fine tune that email that goes out and I need to, you know, do better about reaching out to the, to the, to my customers and everything. And I went, then like the next day we get the email and it says, oh, by the way, we're removing the emails. I'm like, how do I keep thinking of these things right before we get the announcement? <laughs> so it cracked me up. Um, Anyway, so yeah, Happy New Year from Etsy. We're going to remove the the buyer emails for you sellers. But again, it's not that big of a deal for the most part. It's it's an extra step if you want to do it manually. And if not, then don't do it for the, you know, you, oh, here's another one. For the buyers, when you can send in the invoice with them, my sister doesn't print an invoice, right? I do because I made a huge mistake the other day and my printer was down. And so I didn't put the invoice in it. And I dropped the package off and I got home and I looked at the printer. I have a label printer. I went, son of a gun. The label was, was still sitting on there. And I was in a hurry and I had a couple of them and it must have got smashed in between. So I didn't see it. And I just threw them all in when I got to the post office. I was in a hurry. And then I came home and I went, oh. So I just sent out a package with no invoice in it. No label on it. Like there's no way they're going to know it's from me. Right? So I was like, okay, well that's just gone. So I sent out a new one with the right label and I just called it a loss. And I'm like, okay, that was like a $20 waste, but whatever. So I put an invoice in it, but you could, if you don't put an invoice in it, you can put in a slip of paper that says, Hey, you know what? Join my email list. I don't have a ton of people do it when I do it that way, but you can introduce people to things that way as well. And with less communication coming from the sellers, maybe they'll be more apt to do it. It just depends on the wording and how you present it, right? Maybe make a label and stick it. If you're like, for me, I package the product up, put it straight on the package. So they have to see it. Cause a lot of people just take that paper out and throw it out. Right. Okay. So I'm kind of losing my voice again. Not quite over that, but anyway, so those are some ideas. If you have more questions or you're worried about this, or whatever, hop into the little biz resources, Facebook group will, you know, be covering this as we can. I mean, you have until February 5th, right? So February 5th, you can keep business as usual, keep collecting the emails as you are. I would highly recommend setting up that landing page and getting it ready so that starting February and put it everywhere now, right? Start getting other emails. I do get people sign up on my email list from the little shop announcement that I have, right? I get them every now and again, and they don't always, aren't always buyers. So those are things that you just have to start thinking about different ways to get them. So if email is important to you, this is how you're going to get your emails now. So if you have questions, again, hop into Little Biz Resources Facebook group, and we will have more info coming out as we get closer.